Savage Gauntlet. You are Gervan, a guard of the Merchant Lintel of Streed. You are in prison. Your head hurts. Why are you here? You remember Lintel saying... Right. You have to be careful with those Gervais folk. Can't behave like you do at home. Best thing is to keep yourself to yourself. Stay sober and stay near the docks where they're used to strangers and won't mind as much. Go on for those pirates out of Kef. I'd have never have had a bunch of no-brains like you lot. <laughs> of course you wouldn't listen. A noble warrior like yourself doesn't take orders from fat merchants. Bad enough on the ship, but on land. So you went into Tutu drinking and singing. Scaran money goes a long way in Javej. You remember that you and your friends were sitting in the Hammer of Keft Inn, feeling happy and boisterous. You pulled a barmaid into your arms and demanded a kiss and a bed for the night. The whole room went quiet. All heads turned towards you and the struggling maid. Hands casually dropped down onto the sword hilts. The innkeeper ran out, shouting. No blood is to be spilt here. I'll get the judge. She will deal with him. You laughed. <laughs> hey, she! <coughs> she! How can a woman be a judge? <laughs> in no, in Scaran, our women know the place. <laughs> it's a well known fact that men are the stronger and more intelligent sex. The last thing you remember is two women in the uniform of the town guard coming in through the door and yourself shouting. Any Scaran man's with 20 Chavez. <laughs> It's morning now, and it feels like a miserable one at that. You remember something else? The guards talking. The gauntlet. They'll be going down there now. Now you hear the temple bell striking the hour. The door to your cell is opened. Right, sure, then. Come on. Turn over section A and place this section of the floor plan in front of you. Place the Jervan counter in passage A. And have the other counters and monster sheets to hand. Stop the tape whilst you do this. Your sword lies on the floor. Because of your hangover, it takes you three attempts to pick it up. You have to pause for breath, listening to the ringing in your ears and the unmusical churnings of your stomach. Taking two steps forward and one step back, you stagger drunkenly down the corridor. At the end of the corridor is a heavy wooden door. On it is written... There is no handle. Decide how you will open the door. Pause the tape and write down your decision. Turn over section G, making sure that the arrows from one section lead on to those of the next. If you open the door with a physical blow, take one point of damage on the arm or leg with which you aimed the blow. If you did not specify, deduct one point of damage from your sword arm. If you blew on the door, puff, it opens and you take no damage. <laughs> Behind the door is a small but very hungry Javesh ape. It thinks you are breakfast and you must fight it. Consult the Javesh ape monster sheet and place the ape counter next to yours in the room. Because of your intoxicated state, you only have a 35% chance of striking the ape with your longsword. The ape has an additional 10% chance on top of his printed chance to hit with each of his three attacks. This means that his bite has a 20% chance of injuring you and each of his claws have a 30% chance to hit. Continue the fight until one of you is killed. Stop the tape and conduct the fight.
if you were lying at the ape's feet, go back to the beginning and try again as Javan the second. If the ape lies at your feet, turn over section V. You open the door and advance along the corridor. Throw a ten-sided dice. If you throw a one, you avoided the pit trap on the square marked X. If you fell into the trap, throw a six-sided dice. If you throw a one or two, your left leg is injured. If you throw a three or four, your right leg is injured. A five or six means that both legs are injured. Now throw a six-sided dice for the amount of damage. If both legs are damaged, throw for each separately. If you throw one to three, you take one point of damage. Four or five gives two points of damage. Six means no damage. You crawl out of the hole and proceed to the end of the corridor. Turn over section O. As you enter the room, a wizened old woman in the uniform of the town guard says, "Your sword goes no further." Take this war club in its stead. Will you either a, do as she says, b, fight her, c, argue with her? Write down your decision. If you choose to do as she said, turn over section E. Make a note that you now have a club, forty percent chance to hit, causing one to six points of damage. Cross longsword from your weapons list. If you choose to argue with her. She will not give way. You must either do as she says or fight. Write down your decision. If you choose to fight her, she has a short sword and is wearing chainmail and carrying a shield. As you draw your sword, she mutters a cursed blade spell. You have a fifteen percent chance to hit her. She has a forty percent chance to hit you. Her short sword causes one to six points of damage. Place the krizaz counter next to you in the room and stop the tape whilst you conduct the combat. If you have lost, go back to the beginning and try again. If you have won, turn over section E. As you can see, you may either go straight on or turn left. If you decide to go left, please wind to the end of the tape and continue the adventure on side B. If you decide to go straight on. Continue on this side of the tape. Make your decision now. Turn over section T. As you enter section T, a portcullis crashes shut behind you. You cannot go back. Ahead of you on the wall is a message. It says. In Jivaj, I say a man who doesn't treat women as equals is only half a man. You may go either left or right. No matter which direction you take, the corridor ends with a large axe-like pendulum. On the wall opposite is written. Give the password to stop the pendulum. On the other wall is written. Get quail as you pass by. Get quail as you pass by. If you need time to determine the password, please stop the tape. If you concluded that the password is equality, then you say that word and the pendulum stops. If you did not get the password, only one attempt, I'm afraid, or did not get any password, then you must try to dodge past the pendulum. Throw a six-sided dice. If you throw odd, you are lucky and you get through. If you throw even, only half of you gets through. Your spirit may drift back to the beginning and try again. If you pass the pendulum, you go up to the door. Behind the door, you hear this. Turn section N over. As you open the door, you see a large wolf at X. Part of the floor is stone flags, part wood. In the corner is a large wooden pole at P. Will you A attack the wolf with your club or sword if you have it, or B ignore the wolf? Make a written note of what you're doing. If you chose to ignore the wolf, you may either take the pole or leave it. Please make a note. If you chose to leave the pole, turn to section H. If you chose to take the pole, you may keep to the wood or cross the stone flags.
If you chose to keep to the wood, you leave the room with the pole. Turn to section H. If you chose either to fight the wolf or cross the flagstones, you must conduct combat with it now. Stop the tape. If you win, you may take the pole and proceed to section H. The door shuts behind you. You are standing on a small square platform. In the opposite corner is a similar platform and the door out of the room. In between is a muddy pool with steeply sloping sides. If you have the pole, you may test the depth and find that in two of the adjoining squares it is very deep, but on the third it is just shallow enough for you to stand in. You may slide into the water and guide yourself across with the pole. Turn to section D. If you do not have the pole, you may either trust to luck in choosing the shallow section or try to jump across. If you try to jump, throw a six-sided dice. If you throw a six, you made it across. Well done. If you throw a one to five, bad luck, you drown. If you decided to try to wade across, decide which square you will go into. If you choose A or B, bad luck, you drown. If you chose C, you were lucky. Now you must feel your way across. Throw a six-sided dice. If you throw a one, bad luck, you miss your way and drown. Any other score means you make it across. How you wish you'd learnt to swim. Turn over section D. You may either go left or right. If you choose to go left, wind to the end of the tape and continue the adventure on side B. If you choose to go to the right, turn over section P. In this room you see a table on which there is a rusty iron sword. On the wall is written, I will strike with double force those who follow evil's course. Once in your hand it's understood, I will never strike the good. You may take the sword if you wish. Make a note of your decision. Turn over section F. As you walk through the door, a violent wind blows from your right. Throw a six-sided dice. If you throw a one, you fall into a pit on your left and take three points of damage. Roll percentage dice for the location of damage on your body diagram. If you throw a two, you fall and take two points of damage on the left leg. Three causes two points of damage on the right leg. Four causes one point of damage on the left arm and five one point of damage on the right arm. Six means that you have escaped injury. You hurry from the room. Turn over section L. In this corridor there is a flower lying on the ground. You may pick it up and take it with you if you wish. If you have taken the flower, make a written note. If you do not bend to pick up the flower, a rock falls from the ceiling and causes you one point of damage in the head. Turn over section M. On the small table in the centre of the room is a bottle claiming to be a healing potion. Will you use it? Decide now. If you use the potion, it completely cures one body area, such as left arm or torso. Remove all damage points from one chosen area. If you chose not to use the potion, its healing qualities are no longer of any use. On the wall is a message. It reads, Just one more room. The trap is set. You haven't learned your lesson yet. You realise that the inhabitants of Javesh have appalling taste and are worse poets than they think they are. As you leave the room, a club strikes you from behind. Yeah. Throw a six-sided dice. If you throw a one or two, you are hit on the head. Otherwise, you are hit on the torso. The club causes two points of damage when it hits. Turn over section W. 
As you enter this room, you see the judge, Chair Lippy. She says... You took your time getting here. She carries a club and a sword and is wearing chain mail. She continues... There are two kinds of duel in Javesh, with clubs or with swords. If you have a sword, you may choose it, and only one of us will leave this room. If you have no sword, or if you would prefer it, we will fight the true duel of Javesh, with clubs but no armor, till one of us is unconscious. Make your decision now. If you choose to fight with clubs, use the concussion table to calculate the result. If you are unsure of how to work out concussion, reread the relevant section in the basic rules. Stop the tape and work out combat. If you choose swords and still have your own sword, conduct the combat now. Stop the tape. If you choose to use the rusty sword, you find that you cannot hit the judge. What is more, she doesn't even try to hit you. She just stands there and laughs. You will remain a prisoner without honour in the Javez gauntlet. If you fought with your own sword and won, you may now leave the gauntlet and return to the docks. You survived, but in Javezian eyes are not a very honourable character. Award yourself ten honour points. If you fought with clubs and lost, you are carried out of the gauntlet. Award yourself eighty-five honour points. Your honour is restored. If you fought with clubs and won, you may leave the gauntlet. Award yourself 85 honour points. Will you carry the concussed judge out with you? Stop the tape and write down your choice. If you take the judge out, award yourself a further 15 honour points. If you did not take the judge out, subtract 15 honour points for being a churl. You had better return to your ship, but be on your best behaviour next time you come to Tutu, or any town in Javez. The true sound of adventure is the sound of dragons.